Howdy folks, welcome to Beach Bum Creations. This is Tom, and on this channel we will show you how to take the items you find on the beach. The seashells, the seaweed, the driftwood, anything you find on the beach, we'll show you how to make lifelong memories using resin out of those things. So, there's Boogie, together, Boogie and I will show you how to make these things. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy if you like the videos. Please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right, folks. Welcome, um, Beach Bum Creations. In today's episode, I'm going to make a incense holder candle holder using this seahorse I don't know exactly how I'm going to use it but I have a piece of driftwood that kind of the wood looks sort of like the nose <laughs> of a seahorse I've been I've been kind of waiting to find the seahorse to use that piece of wood driftwood and uh I'm going to also, uh, I have a, an oyster shell that's got a purple rim around it, which I don't see too often. And uh, I'm going to make that into an incense holder. And uh, I'm going to probably put a sand dollar on it. And there's also a pink mount murex out there that has, um, that has a, a big uh, barnacle on it. <laughs> it looks kind of unusual. So I'm going to use that also. So I'm going to take you out to the oyster bar. I'm going to pick out that oyster and maybe uh, some other stuff outside. Hold on. All right, I'm out here at the oyster bar. This is where I s store all my oysters that I'm going to use for incense holders and other things. There's a purple one. Ah, here it is. It's covered up. Okay, so I'm going to use this, this oyster. It's got a pretty neat... Nice deep belly there, so I can put some shells in there, some some uh, blue resin in the bottom, and then some shells. I want a piece of piece of driftwood. I mean, a piece of coral. This coral looks pretty good. I think I'll use that coral. Anything else? Oh yeah, this pink mount murex. Where is that thing? I don't see it. Maybe I used it already. Ah, what's it right here? Yeah, see this one. It has it has a barnacle right on the end of it. <laughs> Never seen that before. So I think that's unusual, and I'm going to use that. And maybe go over here to where I, I put sand dollars out here for the sun can hit them and bleach them out. one looks pretty good right here yep that's a nice one all right so we'll get all this stuff inside and set it up all right folks I'm out here uh, looking for the uh, piece of wood there that looks like it right there yeah right there see how it's got that <laughs> it's got like a head on it like a seahorse yeah i'll probably cut this off some it's a little long so anyway, any rate there you go we'll get this stuff all set up and see if i can make something out of it all right folks i'm back <clears throat> i've kind of got it set up a little bit this uh this is going to be the incense holder and it's going to be removable so what i'm going to do <clears throat> is i'm going to glue this seahorse to that uh sand dollar right there and then I'm going to have this one kind of looking down at it like this. And it'll be on its own little island right here. It'll be an island of broken shells. And over here will be an island of broken shells with water in the middle. A lot of water in this area right here because that's where the sand dollar, I mean the uh, oyster shell, the incense holder will sit. I'll glue it. Uh, alphabet um, olive right here so that that'll hold the incense 
Again, this will be right here, sort of like this. I have to cut this down a little bit. It's way too tall. And then this will be circling. It's kind of, see how it's kind of rounded right there? It'll be circling this. And then <clears throat> I'm thinking somewhere like over here, maybe I'm going to put a, another little island like and have that as the, uh, the candle holder or maybe even two candles, one on each side. So we'll see. But it's going to be a candle holder and an incense holder. And the, uh, that's going to be glued on to there. So you won't see it. I try to make all my projects where they're, they're you can look at them from any, any angle, front, back, either side. They all, it'll look good in any way. There's no front and back, in other words. I did that on a few, and, which is bad because <laughs> you, don't want, you don't make the backwards viewable, so it looks ugly on the back. So I make them where they look good all the way around. So anyway, there you go. And then I'm going to have at least 25 varieties of shales on, the, on the, the blue part will be the water. So we'll get started on this. I gotta, uh, first thing I'm going to do is clean all this. I'm going to grab a, um, some of the bigger shales that I'll put on this project and uh, clean it, including, including cleaning this wood. It's been sitting there for a few years and cutting it. So let's get started right away. All right, folks, back them out here at the shop. I'm going to clean this uh, oyster shell and this peak mouth murex. This one here. They're not, neither of them are very dirty. This is what I use. This toilet bowl tile cleaner. When I do something big like this, I, have, I brush it on. I poured this, the cleaner, into here. And this is nothing but water in here. So I... I would dip a, a shell normally I would just dip it in here but see this one's too big to go in there and this one obviously is too big so I use a brush and I brush it on so because I'm holding it and brushing it I'm gonna get it on my hands for sure so I wear a glove when I do this when I do normal shells I don't unless they're really big so anyway, let's just start putting this on and see how we can bring this color out on this I don't even know if it will actually it's making it a little lighter a little whiter I should say that's not, too, not too much difference there well it is cleaning it and killing anything that was alive on it <laughs> i'll set that one aside and start doing this one you can see it's not it's not real bad it's going to be setting like this, so you won't see any of this side here. So I'm just basically going to clean the top part. All right, this one's done. Looks nice. Nice and clean. It'll look better. I'll hose it off a little bit. Get some of this residue off. So that's it for these two items. I cut, take this glove off. I cut the end of this, this part here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna pour clear over this yet. I'm gonna pour some clear on here and see what it looks like. And if it looks okay, then I'll pour it on. I, I think I will because it'll darken it up and it'll make it look like the real seahorse. So anyway, let's get all this stuff inside and start making the the islands out of the broken shells and pouring some resin all right folks i've kind of got it set up i got the uh broken shells there and there this will sit right here kind of looking down and the real seahorse will be kind of glued right in here like so and here is where the candle will sit. I'm trying to make a little indenture. That plastic won't be there. And this, this candle will sit in that little indenture that this plastic will make. I hope. Let's see, you can kind of see it's an indenture there. 
So we'll see how that works. And of course, all of this will be blue where this sits, where the oyster shell sits. That's still wet. <laughs> I can't pour, can't pour any resin just yet. Gotta wait till that all dries off. All right, folks, I mixed up 134 grams of part A, 34 grams of part B, or 64 grams of part B, 66 grams, something like that. 67 grams of part B, I think. Um, and in it, I put some of this traffic blue, blue, blue green, that's blue green. And some of this traffic blue. Put both of those in there, along with a little bit of this ocean blue glitter and just regular silver glitter. That's all inside of here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some in here to cover this kind of yellowish spot where the, the animal attaches. I'm gonna try to cover that and then all this. And then on top of that, I'll put some small shells and then some clear to make it look like it's sitting in water. And this, this little uh, driftwood is, I got it propped up with that little stick. It's on the little island. The sand dollars on the little island and the container. And uh, this has been about 15 minutes or so since I, I poured it. I've stirred it for at least four or five minutes. So it's ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring right now. As I get this stick out of there. Get the container out. And as you know, if you've watched any of my other ones, I put these shells underneath this one first layer of plastic so that the resin cannot go any further. All this area in here is going to be blue. This is where the uh, oyster will sit. Let's get on the other side of it. These kind of projects take a lot of resin, but they're good. So, that's the first coat, first layer. Just gonna let this uh, kind of find its home. With a little help from this stick. <laughs> Get this stick stuck in there. Okay, I'm gonna need a little bit more blue just to, I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna do it later. I just want this to set up right now so I have a base. And uh, I'll come back in about, uh, maybe about three or four hours and add some more blue to this. All right, folks, I'm back. It's tacked up a bit and uh, I mixed up some more, mixed up uh, 120 grams this time and 60 grams of part B. What I did here, this is, this is mixed and ready to pour, really ready, um, <clears throat> is I went and I packed some, some of these broken shells all around this thing just like this. This is how I did it. I just left this little area here so you could see how I did it. I just stuck it in there and packed it underneath that lip because I want to have a groove there so that so this is going to come out after this is poured and uh, the candle will go there. So I had to add some more there. This is kind of setting up 
and I didn't let it get totally set up because if you let it totally set up, then it'll definitely see the different colors because you can't match the colors exactly. And if you do it too soon, it'll just mix. It'll be one color. But So I waited a little bit so that if it is a different color, it, it'll look different. You'll see stripes and stuff. It'll, it'll look better, I think. Okay, um, I need to pour some of this before I pour it all into there. Is the, uh, let me tilt this down a little bit. This oyster shell right here, that's gonna be the spot where when you do the incense, it drops down into there and it will be removable so that you could take it out to clean it. I wanted to cover this whole brown area, but you see, I have a, a shell also underneath here <laughs> just to prop it up to, so I can get it to where it flows where it should, where I want it to anyway. I want it to flow more that way. I'm gonna need two of these. I can see right now. in there right now. Okay, now in there, you know, as I said before, I put um, just some little bitty shells there. And so, then I'll put clear over it so it looks like they're in water. curves up if I, you see if I push down on it see how it goes down so the edge is up so if you just leave it that it'll dry up <laughs> well, I don't want it to dry up I want it to dry flat so I'll come and take these shells out and so it'll the last bit it'll it'll flow and level out it won't continue flowing away the, the angles pretty this is pretty level right here so anyway, now it's just going to set up and there's nothing I can do with it until tomorrow morning. So we'll be back before you know it. All right, folks, I'm back. It's that time again. I have uh, went through all the boxes of shells that I have and picked out these. Um, I'll try to get all these on the project. There's, th there's over 37. There's at least 37 different types of shells. And then there's several of the same type. So we're gonna go ahead and start right away and uh, clean these. Again, I'll tell you, um, in case you're just joining, this is what I use, this toilet bowl cleaner for tile and toilet bowls. I just poured it in there. So all I do is dump it in this jar and then this one's full of water. So I'll just pick the shell up. Let's get this, uh, look at this here one. This is a, uh, called a lettered olive. You can see how dull it is. This is what's going to be used to hold the, uh, the incense. much brighter it is no rubbing or anything just dipping it if you were to if I was to take the brush and rub it some it would even get better 
I'll do it. I can dip this one again. This shell is real thick, so it ain't gonna destroy the shell. There we have this one. You can see just, I mean, really, look how, many, how much better it looks. So, I'll get busy doing all of these. So just hang on, I'll be done in a second. that'll do it I've got all these cleaned up now or all the ones I'm going to clean some of them are too small you dip it in there and it'll just disintegrate so that's it I'll let these dry and then about that time the resin ought to be drying up on it and be time to start laying this out on the project and see if I can get all these on there all right we'll see you inside all right folks I'm back and this is almost dry. You can see there's a drop right here. So it's almost dry. Usually you have a drop and once that drop is, is it's, it's not dry dry. You can tell if I, if I could take it, I can't even peel it off of there. It's still wet underneath. At any rate, here's all the shells that I'm going to try and get on this project. You can see I have all the big ones. I, when I put them on, I, when you make them, you can do it any way you want, but the way I do it is I put the big, big ones on first. And that takes up most of the space. I try to put them on in a uniform manner. And after that, I put in the mediums and then I work over to the small shells. And these real small ones, those will go inside of here, and I'll put uh, clear on top. Once I put all these shells on here, I'm going to pour clear over it, and uh, then I'll do some finishing touches after that. All righty, folks, it's a new day, and uh, it's dry. I've put all the uh, shells that I'm going to put on it. I put things uh, in the places where I'm gonna have them. I still have to, uh, they're just sitting there. No, nothing's nothing's resin down. I've got little shells inside of there. And uh, I also put a shell on the lid of the, uh, of the candle. So here you have mixed up um, 106 grams of part A, 53, part B. And as always, you need your alcohol, your paper towel. And in this case, I'm gonna need the heat gun because I'm gonna paint. The first thing I'm gonna do is paint this, this driftwood and then paint this. This big uh, murex, or yeah, murex. Peak mount murex. But see, I gotta hold it over here so that all the drippings drip down on there. So, once I get set up, uh, we'll go ahead and start pouring the clear. All righty, folks. I apologize for that pounding. They're building a house next door, or a condominium complex, I think. It's too big to be a house. I thought it was a house before. All right. First thing I'm going to pour is this, uh, the oyster shell, the shells on the oyster shells. Now I got this pointer here because these shells are going to float. They're going to move around a little bit. So you need something to be able to manipulate them. And uh, I guess I don't need the incense in there right now. So I'll just go ahead and start pouring. This stuff is really hot. I mixed it about 15 or 20 minutes ago. 
But as always, I like to wait just a little bit. All right. So, I think I'll just start pouring and then use the brush after I get some on there. You move this out of the way for now. So I'll put this over here so we can get some of this <laughs> drippings. get too much on this I don't want to get any in it because I'm going to come back and and uh, put some blue put some blue in there so it looks like water is gotten down inside of there another thing is I don't like any of my stuff to touch anything <laughs> I like it to be like freestanding so that's just the way I do it it don't matter how you do it, I guess, whatever makes you happy, but that's what makes me happy. So now I'm just gonna go and pour this. And the main thing with this is, is just to secure these shells to this blue. That's all it is, it's just to secure them. So when I come back the next time, I can use the brush and brush them on. Brush it really good. gonna let this sit up for probably around uh, four hours and uh, I'll come back and finish it off and tomorrow morning it'll be dry and ready to go all right One thing I forgot to show you, um, which I'm gonna show you right now, but I forgot to mention, it's good to have the heat gun on. Things like this, when you're painting it on, like anywhere around here, this it'll drip off. And then you'll have, it'll be really ugly. Plus, you, and, and the thing, the thing like the water right here, you'll get bubbles in there. So you wanna fix those by blowing them out. So it's, a, it's just quick. You don't want to leave it on there too long because you'll you'll burn the resin. It's just basically to pop any on this case and this right now it doesn't really matter. I'm just doing it to smooth it out because it's you know you can see where I ran it and it's pooled sort of in places. So, but then there's some places where I brushed down and it's dripping like right underneath here. And on this shell, and you don't want drips, it just looks bad. So, okay, that's it. I'll wait now for four or five more hours. All right, I'm back. I don't know if you can see that. It's been about 10 minutes, and you can see the drip on this point right here, the one that's in the center, and the one behind it. Pretty big drip on that one. There was a big drip at the very tip of his this beak here but it dropped off but there's another one forming so it will it will form and that's why i have this stick see i just come in here and if you just touch it it'll you can get rid of it same with over here just hit that and right here and it's no more that's how you get rid of them 
Alrighty folks, I'm back. I'm gonna begin by painting the uh, oyster shell with the clear. Um, it's not set up properly right now, is it? These need to go on this side for one. All right, a little bit more this way. There you go. All right. This now is the final coat, so it will, uh, everything is adhered now. So this is going to put everything forever in its spot. Secured on here real good. I went around and touched everything and it's uh, ready to go. Put this mouth murex. <laughs> now there's one of these shells here that's called a, it's called a chalky tackle because it's kind of got a really chalky look and feel to it <laughs> and uh, I accidentally uh, poured resin on it so <laughs> it's nice and shiny now <laughs> you never guess that it was a uh, <laughs> uh, chalky looking pretty good now so um, what I'm gonna have to do is um, in about I don't know four or five minutes I'm gonna come and use the heat gun and get all the bubbles out of this because some of this stuff is gonna now drip really bad <laughs> so you got to get all the bubbles out That's going to do it for a, a few minutes. I'm going to come back in a few minutes and get some more of this done. All right, I'm back now. I've been, uh, it's been probably about know, 10 minutes or so. <laughs> I've been going around and around this thing. You can see a drop coming off right there. Oh, here's one. <laughs> Just notice this one. You can see it. Let me turn this a little bit different. Think about right there. You see that drop good right there. And that's why I have this pointer. You can just take it and get it off like that. Same with this one down here. Take it off. Yeah, I've already been around this about 10 times and picking them off. <laughs> Every time I come back, there's more. So I just keep doing this. Every time you use the heat gun on it, it, uh, it thins it out and it makes it run, but that's what makes it look real nice and smooth and shiny. So that's what you gotta do if you wanted that. You don't have to, it's up to you. Well, folks, I'm back. It's the next day and uh, everything's nice and dry. 
Let's look at that. Mm -hmm. Let's see how this comes off of this plastic this time. up by anything, anything that's on here, yeah, it's, uh, everything's secure, you can pick it up by any, any one of these, even this crab probably, but at any rate, here it is, now if you look at it real close, you'll see that there's a lot of this clear right here that I got to trim this off. So today, I mean, a little later, I'll trim this off. So, we go just like this. There you go. Looks pretty good, if you ask me. Ooh. So. We'll be back in a little bit after I trim this off. Alrighty folks, I'm back. I have just cut off the clear and sanded down the sides. As you can see, <laughs> I have the resin all over me. I don't know if you can see that, <laughs> kind of upside down. It's all over everywhere. But one of the things I do when I make my projects is to make it to where I mean, they're pretty delicate, intricate, so it's easy just to take the water hose and hold it off. That's how you clean my projects. See how nice and clean it looks now? Just a little bit. So, I'll get my hands to... Uh, so... There you go. I'll get a final video once that's dry. Alrighty folks, it's complete. It's item number 138. It's a centerpiece with a detachable incense burner. You see it's right there. I just detached it. Also it's got a candle holder right here. And you see the little area right here where the candle sits. Anyway, I'll go around and try to uh, name the shells. Um, so, hang on. Right here, this one here is a Chinese hat. It's a flat scallop. This is a pink mouth murex, or sometimes called a cabbage murex. This one right here is a rock snail. It's an angel wing, another flat. This one's sometimes called a white Irish scallop. This is a uh, transverse arc, a paper fig. This is uh, some type of limpet. I don't know the exact name. This one here is a coquina. This is a cross barred Venus. This one here is a bitter sweet. And this one is, this is a slipper shell. It's a tiger's paw. Uh, I can't tell what that one is. I think it's a slipper shell also. It's a turkey wing right here. This is a coquina, an Irish flat. This is a scallop, calico scallop. This is another uh, Chinese hat. This one's called a alternate talon. Uh, this one's a alphabet cone. This one's called a prittus, prittus cockle, rose petal. It's a sunray venus here. This one here is another coquina. As you can see, there's a sand dollar oyster shell there. This is a moon snail. This is a uh, Morton's egg cockle. This one here, <laughs> actually, it's really shiny now. This is a cockle, but it's called a chunky cockle. 
This is a, a crossbarred arc. Uh, this is a channel duck clam. This is a blunt talon, another calico, scallop. Uh, that one's called, I think it's just the beginning lady in waiting, a young lady in waiting. It's a New England clam, a scallop. Um, this is a combed Venus. I don't know the name of it. Anybody know? Be about me below. Um, oh, this one here for sure. That's a that uh, lady in waiting. And this one is a mosey, mosey, arc. I can't make out what that is down there. I think it's a it's another uh, Chinese hat. So at any rate, we have a. Uh, this here little teepee thing is uh, lobster. <laughs> it's the antennae of a lobster. We got uh, two different types of seaweed, this one and this one over here. We have this crab right here. We have a couple crab legs sticking out here. And we got one over here. So that'll do it. Oh, there's, I don't know, there's a few shells in here too. There, these two right here. This one and this one, I have no idea what it is. It's not a coquina. There's a coquina right there. It's, and that's a mozzie point. It's another Chinese hat. It's a flat scallop, flat scallop. There's another little baby angel wing right there. So at any rate, there you have it. Oh, I didn't tell you this one. That's a rough scallop right there. Another alph alphabet comb. That's called a Florida cone there, or sometimes they refer to that as a dusky, dusky cone. Okay, there you have it. Item number 138, complete.